People in Africa are in need of clean water, sturdy infrastructure, and new schools. The pollution in China is crazy. Europe has gone through hell many times before, and it seems like they're back there again with a plethora of social economic problems. But here in America, we have it worse than others. Yep, that's right. Low speed internet, shoddy phone service, overeating, and getting 2% milk in your latte instead of soy. This isn't to say that America hasn't had its share of real problems depression, prohibition, and terrorism. But in many creative mediums, these are either heavily downplayed or untouched in favor of making us look like big damn heroes. We start out strong and end up even stronger. This isn't the case for Chaos Studios' now defunct Homefront video game. Written by C.J. Kirshner with direction from Red Dawn's John Milius, Homefront exposes us once again to the first-person shooter genre and all the tropes it brings, but not as a super soldier or a combatant with an extensive and particular set of skills. You play as a former Marine Corps pilot who, under the scrutiny of an oppressive, antagonistic occupation force, is likely malnourished, demoralized, and jaded. The latter might suit us, the player, very well considering the influx of FPS games back then. Though once a gun is placed in our hands, the conditioning kicks in along with the adrenaline. Yet the game, through story and other factors, reminds us that the enemy is well-equipped, well-trained, and heavily outnumbers all opposition. Now that is what one must keep in mind as a guerrilla fighter resisting the Korean People's Army's occupation. At least, that could be the assumption going through someone's head. It certainly went through mine after seeing that terrible intro. Terrible as in sinister or likely to cause terror, as so few video games have ever given me the option to watch two enemy soldiers gun down a husband and wife a few feet away from your crying, screaming child, only to go their separate ways so said child can run up to their parents' as fresh corpses. Oh, but that's just the beginning. Homefront doesn't pull its punches. Thanks to nifty little collectible newspapers scattered around nearly every level, set building via American shanty towns, KPA checkpoints, and survivalist strongholds, and thought provoking dialogue, Homefront paints a good, drab picture of what life is like under an impressive occupying force. Even playing as a guerrilla fighter is pretty damn hard, what with having to scour battlegrounds for scraps of ammo just so you can have a fighting chance at the next engagement. Friendly NPCs are wary of the resistance and there's an entire level built around getting a helicopter out of an area controlled by American survivalists who are on no one's side but their own. Homefront tries its hardest to support the idea that war is hell, with many levels showcasing man's cruelty and apathy towards their fellow man. I gave KPA soldiers mercy killing so they didn't have to burn from white phosphorus, sided with token female Rihanna when she expressed shock at what war brought out of people, and felt anger when a rebel oasis was wiped off the face of the earth by the KPA. But after playing through it for the first time, this immersion seems to be one of Homefront's only saving graces. The game has its share of problems, most notably the short campaign. If one doesn't care about collectibles or fooling around with any and every NPC that wanders into their sights, it could take two to three hours to complete it all. Add an extra hour to my hard playthrough, thanks to forced walking, waiting for Cooper and other important NPCs to breach doors and continue the mission, uncanny enemy fire and flanking, and generally my impatience, and you've got yourself four hours. Taking cover from enemy fire is second nature in FPS titles, as is waiting for health regeneration to kick in and put you back at 100%. But there is always something terrifying about the enemy AI's insistence to casually walk out of cover to take pot shots at me. This isn't the same as flanking because flanking takes care and tactics. Nope! The AI just waltzes up to my position in plain sight of my grizzled teammates and everyone else just to give me a hot lead how do you do? And apparently Cooper and the rest of the gang just let it happen. I can go on and on about how Homefront falls victim to several FPS tropes that have plagued the games of that era, most notably that of following one important implacable NPC with the power to open doors, but in doing so I would describe nearly five other games. Homefront's gameplay is mediocre at best, with a handful of enjoyable set pieces. Against other heavy hitters, the game can hardly hope to compete, but when it comes to scenery, world building, design, and arguably the story, and just about anything else that isn't related to gameplay, I believe that Chaos Studios did the best they could with Homefront. Personally, I wish the game, or perhaps the company itself, didn't fall hard on its face because I sure wish there was more of Homefront. And before you say it, no, Homefront the Revolution doesn't count.